What's up, everybody? It's One Crazy Story. I'm Nate Armbruster, and thanks for listening, tuning in, streaming, downloading, whatever you want to call it, Uh, broadcasting, receiving of the broadcasting. I don't know. I don't know what it's called anymore. It's the internet, and you're here, and I'm here, and this is pretty cool. And that's all I'm trying to say. It's pretty awesome that this works. Anyway, hope you're doing well. I'm I'm doing all right. I'm in recovery. Um, I... I don't get, um, I don't, I usually don't get hung over. I mean, I've, we've all had a, a rough night or two, but man, yeah, I, uh, like last week I had an experience that I was anticipating to be, uh, highly hung over, extremely hung over whatever, whatever the proper one, you know, whichever one you like, that's the one, that's the one you, you listen to. But yeah, I went to a wedding and, uh, Weddings are easy. They're, just, they're dangerous, especially if you like to drink. You know, I mean, I, I enjoy drinking. I like going. I, I like calm. I'm not. I'm. I'm a. I'm young. Okay, but I don't like. Go, I don't. I'm not a nightclub guy. I don't. I don't like going to places that I have to yell. I don't like. I'm. I'm. I'm kind of crotchety in some ways. I. I, I'm old school in that I like having a conversation. I don't want to sit across from you while you scroll through your phone. You know what I mean? That's not my thing. I don't like it. That's, that's the most obnoxious thing to me is when you go out with somebody and you're just staring at them, staring at their phone. And I was like, well, this is fun. How's Instagram? Yep, it'll be there when we're done talking. So, uh, you know, thanks for the company. That annoys me. I just like to go out, have a drink, and chat. That's my favorite thing ever. I don't like going. I don't need I don't need an activity with my drinking. So many people do. I don't like it. I don't I don't like You ever go out with somebody like, "Oh my god, there's uh, let's go, let's go to top golf." You can drink beer while you golf. Yeah, I can do that. Any you can do that. That's golfing. It's just a bar with golf clubs and now now my bill's $90. I don't want to go, I don't need to do something while I drink. I just like to drink. I don't need a game. I don't need to be entertained. I like to drink and chat. That's it. Top golf axe throwing is now a thing. I'm not saying it's not fun, but I'm not going to, I just, I don't need, maybe, I just, I can't justify paying the money. That's all. I don't want to, I don't need to spend that much money. Just to throw axes, you can do that without going to a bar, but you have to go to a bar to do it because that's what looks cool. I don't need an activity. I don't, I don't want to play games. I don't, I don't need, I, I just, I never, I never even like drink like beer pong. I'll, I'll entertain it. But why is it, it always resorts to drinking. How about we just drink, just drink. My favorite drinking game is getting home safely. Okay. Have too much, figure out how to get home safely. Find an Uber, hitchhike, walk. I don't know. Call a friend, beg. Um, you know, and and a lot of people drive, (laughs) which isn't safe. So don't, don't drink and drive people. If you're drunk right now, listening to this, good on you, but don't drive. It's so funny is everybody says don't drink and drive, but everybody does it. Same thing with texting and driving. Texting and driving is just ridiculous. Every time I see somebody texting behind the wheel, I sip my beer. But I don't need, I don't need, I don't need games. I don't need anything. I don't need anything to drink with, you know, I just want to have a drink and that's it. (sighs) But yeah, if I'm going out to have a good time, like a wedding, like I was at a wedding recently and this was a, this was a game changer for me. This was a a life changing moment. I had an eye opening experience and more so how I react to uh, stressful situations, right? My, so I'm going to a wedding, a friend of my girlfriend's, right? It's in downtown Chicago. We're having a, having a blast this, this day is amazing. It's a wedding. Everybody's happy. We're all drinking. I'm drinking before the wedding. I don't know. It was just like a nice, it was a nice day. It's one of those days that you're just, you're ready to go and have a nice, nice time. That's it. You're dressed up. You look nice. You feel good. So you have a couple of drinks before the wedding, you know, then you go to the service, go to the reception, just to realize you've had three types of alcohol and you, you know, the rule, I mean, you know, my, in my experience, you shouldn't mix anything. You know, you should, if you're drinking beer, you stick to beer. If you're drinking gin, only drink gin. Don't, don't start drinking tequila and wine. Don't, don't mix it. Cause that's when you start to get, that's when it gets dangerous. You know, at least in, in my brain, 
I, I learned uh, last week that maybe should stick to one type of alcohol. You know, I, I just play it safe. That's all. I'm a pretty mild mannered guy. I don't, I don't get too outrageous. Even when I'm drinking, I'm not the type to get loud or violent. You know, I, if anything, I get too talkative. But other than that, I don't really get involved in anything. You know, I'm not pretty, pretty chill. So the thing about this wedding is it's my girlfriend's friends, right? So I know her friends, but at this wedding, I'm going to see her friend's parents and they're the coolest people ever. So fun. I don't know. Like, I'm just so excited to see them because I don't get to see them that much. I'm not going to get lunch with them. You know what I mean? I don't know them like that. So the only time I have to catch up with them is at a wedding. And that happens once a year, if that. And that's probably only going to last for the next year or so. So I got to get my, I got to get my, my fun in, you know, get to see these people. You have a few. It's great. Well, you know, halfway through the reception, it's, you know, we eat dinner, do the whole thing starting to feel good, realizing you've had more than one type of alcohol. That's not good. I go, maybe I should slow it down. Nope. Going to go to the bar, grab a drink. While I'm at the bar, one of them goes, Nate, let's do a shot. And of course, I got a few in me. I'm feeling happy. These people are there. They're great. It's a, around, I'm around great people. Let's do the shot. Guy hands me a shot. I go, what is this? And then he says, that's tequila. And I didn't even blink. I go, let's do it. Drink the tequila shot. This happens three times over the course of the evening. In between shots, I'm drinking whatever I'm ordering. I, don't, I, don't, I truly don't remember. So the wedding's winding down. We're having a blast. Night's good so far. My girlfriend and I decide it's time to leave. And we decide we're going to take an Uber home. And uh, the next day we were talking about this and my, and my girlfriend says to me, um, I knew it was time to leave because when I said it's time to leave, you responded not in words, but in sounds. Which is crazy because that means in that moment, what I remember is responding coherently. I remember saying words, but she didn't hear them because it came out as, <laughs> yeah, I was a mess, man. It's, I'm not proud, but yeah, I, I had fun. <laughs> Sometimes it just gets away from you. It's hard. It, open bar is tough, especially if you like to have a few. It's like it's, and then once you start mixing and you're having, you're just, you're already in a great mood. You're at a wedding. It's fun. And it's a slippery slope. That's all. But you got to be careful. You got to be smart. You got to make smart choices. So don't do, don't, you know, just be careful. If you're going to a wedding soon, don't make the same mistakes I did. This is where the night got murky for me. My girlfriend has this puppy, right? Little puppy. Actually, it's a big puppy. It's a pit bull. He's only, he's four months. He's a, he's a four month old pit bull. Adorable. But he's got to be like 40 pounds. It's almost a full, that's a full size. It's, it's heavy. Okay. It's not a little, you can't just throw it in your purse. You know, you got to. It's a responsibility, you know, you got to take care of it. You got to find it. It's, and it's, and he doesn't, he can't, and we're not at the point where we can leave him alone all day. You know, you got to find a sitter and all that. So she gets a friend to watch the dog. And as we're leaving the wedding, we ha we're going to hop in this Uber and she goes, we got to go pick up the dog. It's 1 a.m. In my head, I'm like, just let the dog stay there. You know, don't, I don't want to do this right now. I want to go home. But I don't say that because, you know, I, I know better. Also, the other thought in the back of my head is Uber doesn't allow dogs. At least from what I've read, dogs aren't allowed. Now, if you get a cool driver, it's probably, you know, it's not a big deal, but they have every right to refuse the the ride, you know. But I also don't say that because, you know, I'm trying to get home safely. So, it's like a $25 Uber ride to her friend's apartment who's watching the dog. And then from there, it's like another mile. So, we get to the girl's apartment. She runs upstairs and this Uber driver just sits there blocking traffic, everybody behind him laying on the horn. I'm uncomfortable. I'm also blacked out drunk. Shouldn't be. I, I don't know. I'm getting stressed out. You know, it's just, it's not, it's not an, it's not a fun experience in my mind. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, I'm getting stressed. So I finally say to the guy, I go, why don't you pull up out of the way, you know, go up and, and move over, you know? 
which I can't believe I had to tell the guy that because don't you just not block traffic, you know, or at least leave enough room for them to go around. But now I sat right there in the middle of the street for a good three minutes while people just lost their minds. Uh, so this guy pulls up a block. He's not happy. I'm confused. He starts asking me where she went. And I'm like, she had to run upstairs. She's coming back, you know. And he goes, well, I have to work. He goes, you guys are wasting my time. And I'm like, dude, we're on the clock. We'll tip you. I mean, I don't, you know, I mean, this is just, this is the, this is how it's Uber. You know, you were getting paid. I mean, not enough, but that's between you and Uber. Not, it's not my fault. I don't know. Also, it's 1 a.m., man. I, I'm clearly not in my right state of mind. Let's, I don't want to do this. Just So he starts getting rude. I get out of the car just because I didn't want to. I, I just had to get away from it. I don't know what I was thinking, but I just got out of the car, started walking toward the apartment, and I see my girlfriend with the dog, and she's like, what the fuck? What are you doing? You're, you're not in the Uber. I was coming. Also, her shoes were in that Uber. So great, Nate. Nice move. Just bail on the Uber she ordered for both of you. Ugh, what a mess. So now she's not happy. I'm confused. It's just a rough night. There's a dog now. So she goes, I'll order another Uber. So we get into this guy's car. She goes, hey, it's, it's you know, it's us. You know, she identifies herself. Guy's like, all right. Guy looks in the back seat and he goes, what's with the dog? <laughs> and we're like, oh, dude, it's like... It's like a mile away. You know, let's just get, you know, can you just get us home? You know, it's, it's, it's been a long night. Well, that, that, that wasn't enough. The guy's like, I can't drive you guys, whatever. And, uh, I don't know what was said. I can't remember. It's been like a week and a half. I'm trying to, you know, get past this. You know, we went back and forth for a minute and he was like, no, I'm sorry. You got to get out of the car. So we get out, but on the way out, my girlfriend says something rude. I can't remember, but something that pissed the, the driver off and that guy gets out. Now he's yelling at my girlfriend. I'm standing on the sidewalk. She's, they're they're arguing, and I'm just I'm freaking out, and I'm like, I don't know what's going on here. So this guy starts call, he starts calling my girlfriend a bitch, and I don't know what came over me, guys, but I ran right up to the guy's car and smashed his side mirror <laughs> with my fist, and uh, immediately I said, Oh God. We need to get out of here. That's it. We're done. This is it. We're walking. I don't care. Let's walk away from this. Whatever. I freaked out. I don't get violent, guys. That's never happened. I had a lot of questions to ask myself. And uh, so we start walking away. And I'm I'm just like, oh, my God. I'm, I am I don't know. I've never hit any. I haven't thrown a punch ever. I don't think ever. Maybe when I, I outside of sports, never thrown a punch. You know? This was so out of character for me. I was... I was confused. My girlfriend's upset. The dog's like, what the fuck is going on? Ah, what a shit show, you know? And, uh, you know, later the next morning, we're, we're kind of recapping everything and I'm trying to figure out what, you know, am I a bad, I'm trying to figure out if I'm just a bad person or was I out of line or what was it, you know? And I think it was a combination of just everything, the alcohol, uh, the stress levels increasing from just getting, I don't know, just everything happening. I just kind of boiled to that point, and as soon as he called my, as soon as he called my girlfriend a bitch, I said something came over me. So, I guess in a way, that guy should have just drove away. Truly, I mean, even though I guess she probably wasn't the nicest to him. I mean, you just drive away, right? It's customer. It's just I've dealt with I've dealt with shitty customers. You just leave. You leave. You just all right. We're done here. I'm done. We got out of the car, no problem. You know, it was fine. But oh, it was a weird night, man. It was just a weird night. And the the craziest part is the next morning I'm thinking like, oh my God, I just, I, you know, I vandalized the guy's car and, and truly the way I punched the mirror, it just folded in. So it didn't even, it wasn't even that badass. You can't even, it wasn't even that like tough, you know, I'm like, you know what? I'll show you fold, you know, like it, that's, it's just not even, it's not even tough. Like there's, no damage was done. Thank God. Cause you know, God forbid I'd done something dumber. But I was still worried. I'm like, this guy, this guy knows who you are. You know, we could get in. I, I, I was worried I was going to get in trouble or something. So, so we're recapping everything. She's looking at. I'm like, worst case, you'll get a one star, right? This guy's not going to call the cops. That, that what's going to happen? What are they going to do? Like, look at the car and go, well, dude, your mirror is fine. I, I don't know what to tell you. Just, you know, maybe just, I don't know. Maybe don't call your customers a bitch. I, I don't know what would happen. So, um, I was worried we we're going to get in some sort of trouble. And, uh, and, and her too, cause her, she's the one that ordered the Uber 
and uh, and we're looking at the thing. The best part is that first ride we got was a two stop ride because it wasn't completed. We got that money refunded, which is hilarious. And then the second ride, we re- we found out the next morning we got in the wrong Uber. The guy we were supposed to ride with was not the same guy that was on her app. So we got in the wrong Uber, got into an argument, and I folded this guy's side mirror in thinking I was just... I. So we lost our minds on some guy that wasn't even supposed to drive us. This, none of this should have happened. This guy also let us in even though she identified herself, unless they had the same name or something. But all I can think is, like, could you imagine... Could you imagine this happening and you can't even get a hold of the people that did it, you know? And, and I just hope that the people that were supposed to get in that got their ride canceled didn't get in trouble or didn't didn't get like a shitty review because of us. But I, I do love the idea of thinking that the driver we were supposed to have is like two cars back watching two psychos argue with an Uber driver and all he could think was like, well, glad they're not with me, you know? Which is ridiculous. So, uh... I don't know, man. I think it was just an isolated incident. I think it was just a bad night. That's all I hope. I don't think it'll ever happen. That it was just the uh, weirdest end to uh, a great evening. It was just the weirdest, weirdest night. But uh, but hey, that's life, right? We all do stupid shit sometimes, as does everybody. I mean, shit, it is called One Crazy Story, and I guess this is probably the craziest thing I've ever talked about that I've done myself. Usually it's just, uh, usually I have a a friend on talking about some crazy shit that they've gotten into and that's, that's probably the craziest it'll get from me. I hope so at least, you know, and by the way, thank you guys for sticking around without the guests. I'm really enjoying doing these solo episodes and I hope you're enjoying it. I, I'm having fun doing them and I hope that means you're having fun listening and I hope if you do like them, you'll let me know, uh, by leaving a review on iTunes, Stitcher, all that good stuff. Tune in, iHeart radio or the radio.com i'm the show's available everywhere if you don't mind sharing it tell your friends about it anybody you know that listens to podcasts it's it's a short they're short episodes they're perfect for the drive and uh and i'm really enjoying doing them so uh thank you guys so much for listening and if you want to reach out online everything i do online instagram twitter facebook all that stuff is just at one crazy story or at nate comedy uh, I do stand up all over the country. If you want, if you want to come see me live, uh, do that. Hit me up. I'll post my schedule on Instagram uh, from time to time, so you guys can come see me uh, if you're actually interested. If not, that's fair. I guess you know if you like the podcast, but not me. I, that, well, that doesn't make sense. So there you go. Come see me live. That's what I'm trying to say. I would love to see you out at a show. Um, and like I said, follow me on Facebook. Do all that good stuff. Well, thank you guys so much for listening, and I'll talk to you next time.